This video isn't about how martial law is implemented or why it could be implemented. Rather, it's about how you can protect yourself and your things if it were to come. So if you're concerned that martial law could be an issue or could be implemented in your area, continue watching. Life under martial law could be very different for you depending on who you are. Things in your every day to day life can be restricted and this includes travel. Under these circumstances, police might not even need a warrant to search your vehicle or your home. For example, when I was living in Massachusetts in the Plymouth area during the Boston bombings, police went door to door going through people's homes without a search warrant. I'm not too sure if martial law was actually declared. I believe it was more of a lock in, or a shelter in place type order. However, the police were able to go door to door and search through different people's homes as they pleased. In the end, the suspect was found hiding in a boat as I remember that night. Let's get down to what the government can do under martial law to you regarding yourself, how you can protect yourself and protect your preps. Now under martial law, the government can come in to your home and acquire whatever they need from your home. This includes water, food, supplies, weapons, ammunition, etc. Now in terms of the government coming and taking your supplies, at the end of the day, at least in the United States, we're all American. And I would certainly hope that someone in the position of power, such as the government, military, or police, would open fire for, on taking your supplies. However, if that isn't the case, which I sure hope it isn't, then there's a few things that you can do to protect yourself and protect your preps. Now on the topic of protecting yourself, I would say take the gray man approach 100% of the time if you can. Comply with these people, just do not let them know that you have food, water, supplies, weapons, etc. Now what I mean by taking the gray man approach is just try to blend in with everyone else around you as best as you can. Don't stand out. Don't do anything that can make you stand out. Act like everyone else around you. If the government is coming by and giving out supplies such as food and water rations, you better make sure that you're there, in line for those rations. If not, people can suspect that you are already prepared, that you already have food and water. And this is not gonna be a good thing. As for clothing, if you're in the city, don't wear camo. If everyone else is not wearing camo, don't wear camo. Plain and simple. Wearing this makes you stick out like a sore thumb in the city. Don't let anyone know who doesn't know that you have preps. Don't let anyone know you have food, water, security, weapons, etc. The only people that need to know about this is you and your immediate family, not even your neighbors. If you're bringing in food and water, I suggest that you bring it in at night or when nobody is going to be around to see it. And now protecting your preps. You can do a couple things to protect your preps in the case of martial law. And the first one is just go get a storage unit in a secure location. Now, doing this obviously means that your preps are not going to be with you. However, if someone comes to your door under martial law looking for supplies, they're not going to find anything except for what you have in your house. Now. I understand how some people might think that leaving firearms in a storage unit isn't the greatest idea. However, you can 
and if possible, keep at least one firearm with you, something that you're not afraid to lose, at least to someone in power. Now, if this were to happen, you could assure yourself that you still have plenty of firearms or food and water in storage. Now, another thing that you can do if you don't want to get storage, and by the way, getting a storage unit would probably be your number one best bet if you live in an apartment, as this next one will likely not apply to you, as you do not own the building, nor can you make alterations to it. Uh, the second thing that you can do is build a shed in the backyard and you can put all your supplies and preps in that shed. Now if you're going to do this I suggest making a hidden basement in the shed. It doesn't have to be big, just big enough to make put all your preps in. Or you can build a somewhat like hidden room in the base or in the in the shed. Now, obviously, you're going to want to make sure that it's hard to spot. Now, some people's homes have actual hidden rooms, and I've lived in a house with hidden rooms. Now, if you're really good at it, you could hide all your preps in these hidden rooms which isn't a bad idea. You just gotta make sure that it's going to be very, very difficult to spot them. If you do have hidden rooms or compartments for your preps, again, make sure only you and your immediate family that lives with you knows where it is and how to access it. This is very important that you do not tell anyone about it for obvious reasons. And the last thing I'm going to discuss in this video is if you have a second location. Now, if travel is restricted in your area, it could be next to impossible to get to this location and get to your preps, making this not the greatest choice in the world. However, some people may have property elsewhere that they can access that they can store preps at. Now, if travel is not restricted and you already own land or another property, maybe think about storing your preps there. Obviously, keeping them safe from the elements. And that's going to be it for this one.